Hey Juan, hey. So good to see you out there. This is Torben. I am so excited to welcome you to live with Torben, preparing the church. And um, I'm just waiting for a few more people to join here. And then I want to do a little intro and tell a little about what you can expect here tonight. Tonight, if you're in Europe, if you are in America, it will be this afternoon. But I'm very excited to be with you and I'm going to use a few minutes just to tell about what to expect and that this is going to be a little different tonight. Yes, welcome. Let everyone come in here. Oh, I've been longing so much to go live with you. It's, I've been longing to hold the phone in my hand and then talk to all of you here again. This is something I've been longing for more than a year and I have so much on my heart and I'm so ready for this. This is first time we have the program here we call Life with Torben Preparing the Church. But I want to say we are not completely set up for it. And therefore it's going to be a little different tonight than it's going to be next Sunday and going on. First thing, we don't have the setup yet complete. We have been so busy this week with so many other things. And therefore we don't have all your comments to show here in the live feed as we will have next Sunday. We also don't have the whole group together as it is now. Like this week have just been really, really crazy in many ways. I've been very busy. A lot of good things have happened in Denmark. There come out a big article about me in the newspaper, but there has also been some attack about that. We have been busy with a new website. We have got up, but the website is not complete yet. Also, we need a very, very important timeline that's going to be on the website very soon. And we are going to talk about that next week. And so many other things have happened this week in my life. And I've been on the phone and talking with many people. So therefore, I and Robert, who have been very busy also in, in Spain where he is, we have not been able to, with the team, to set everything up the way we want to. But we don't want you to miss tonight. So we are going to do it a little different. Look, behind me there is a banner. This is going to be the banner I'm going to speak about out in front of in the future. But I don't want to say so much about that right now. I'm going to say more about this banner when I will do the teaching in very short time. I'm excited for this. But here I am. It's a little light here, a little primitive. But what you can expect tonight, and welcome to all of you who have just joined here. It's so amazing more people are joining. What you can expect tonight is that we will, uh, after a short time, we will have some worship with Ben and Erica, the Brodies in California. They're amazing. And they will have 10 minutes worship with all of us. And we will have sing the revival hymn. I love that. That is our song. No, it's not our song. I think it's YWAM, but we have adopted the song because we love the revival hymn. Missionary Anthem is actually called, but I call it a revival hymn. The Missionary Anthem, we have that and we have some worship tonight. 10 minutes. After that worship, I will sit down in the chair here and I will do some preaching. I will share the first message with all of you since I came out from jail here in life with Torben preparing the church. And then we'll finish up with that. So it'll be 10 minutes worship and it'll be a half hour with me sharing. And that will be all for tonight. But next Sunday, when we go live with Torben, we will have a panel talk after the preaching. And the panel talk is very, very, very important. That is where we have more people in, in the studio, where we will talk about the sermon we have heard. And we will talk about many different things and we will have testimonies from people all over the world. Uh, testimony from what God is doing in their country. T three minutes testimony, one minute testimony. And we will take your comments, your questions and many more things are going to happen from next Sunday. And we are so excited for that, but we are not ready for it tonight. But what we are ready for now is we are ready to worship together. 
And uh, I hope you're ready when Ben and Erica is going to take us into worship. And let's just focus on God. Take 10 minutes, slow down, just be with God. You know, when I was in jail, I had all the time in the world. It was different. <laughs> there was no distractions. And today I'm out again and there's so many distractions in this world. It's, it's really a different world to be outside and to be inside. Let's take 10 minutes. Let's focus on God. Let's worship Him. And then afterward, I will sit and I have a message I would love to share with you in front of this banner. So God bless you all out there and come and join and see you in short time. Bye bye. Hello, everybody. We are so excited to gather together for the first time like this and uh, to be able to worship with you and also introduce the exciting news that Torben is free and he's going to be sharing about the kingdom of God today yes. and some of his experiences in it and also putting our eyes on God when things get tough. Yes. And before uh, we, we have Torben come on, we're going to share in worship. We encourage you remove distractions, mm -hmm. remove whatever else you're doing, because we're going to worship and adore the King of Kings and focus our eyes on Jesus in this time. So let's worship together. Amen.
of our praise. He's so worthy to give up everything else in this life. And he's holy. The Greek word for holy, one of the Greek words for holy is hagios. It means set apart, unmixed, untainted with the world, unlike anything else. So that when we're singing about how holy he is, just remember there's no one like him. So let's sing of his holiness. Thank you, Jesus. now that we have worshipped, we are going to hand it over to Torben. Please um, welcome Torben. This is the first teaching in a new series I want to do called Preparing the Church. And uh, I am so excited to be with you. Behind me is a big banner. And there you see my Bible school. <laughs> This is where I learned a lot of things I'm going to share with you during this new teaching series. This is my cell in Baker County Detention Center. And in this cell you see behind me with the two bunk beds and the shower and the toilet, the sink and all of it, I spent 412 days. I was moving around a little, but I spent more than one year in this cell behind me. And it was during that time I learned a lot. And this is where most of the teaching I'm going to share with you 
I learned that in there. So I'm very excited to be with you and uh, I just want to get started. So I hope you are ready for this. This year in jail really changed me a lot. I, I learned many, many new things and I've been longing so much to come out and, and share all the new things with you. Some people ask me, when I came out and also when I did a phone call with them from jail, Torben, tell me what have you learned? What new things have you learned? And I often say that I learned a lot of new things, but also the old thing I believed, I still believe, but somehow it became stronger. I, 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 it got a different understanding to it. And this is what I actually want to talk about today in this first lesson. I would call what new have I learned or something like that. If I start to look at the new things I've learned, I'm going to teach to all of you doing uh, this teaching series. I learned that this is one book. The Bible is truly one book. Before I saw it more, I knew it was one book, but before I got detained, I saw it more like an Old Testament and a New Testament. Instead of how it is all combined in a way I haven't seen before. And I come with an example. In the past, I have been giving out the Bible to people and there was time I gave out the New Testament. And if you just give out the New Testament to people, you can get a little like, why do the New Testament start like this? It, the New Testament here, it starts with the genealogy of Jesus, the son of Messiah and the son of David and the son of Abraham. And then it just move on the whole way from Abraham and up to Jesus. And it's like Abraham became the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob, Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers. And you know, when you get a book, the New Testament and say, hey, read this. It's really, really, really good. And you then start. This is the genealogy of Jesus, the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac was the father of Jacob. Jacob was the father of Judah. And his brother Judas was the father of Perez and so on and so on and so on. For us as a I would say Gentile believer, us who are not Jews, why do you start like this? But for a Jew, it makes so much sense to start like this. And Matthew was written to the Jews. And there was one thing I really learned in prison, something God really revealed to me in a new way. Before prison, I would have read this. Jesus is the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. And I was have thought, yes. But during the prison time and the studies, something changed. I suddenly start to understand what it meant that Jesus was the son of Abraham. That Jesus was the son of David. And during the prison time, when I read the words again, it suddenly exploded in me. Wow. Jesus, Jesus is the son of David. Well, Jesus, he, he is the son of Abraham. And it exploded in me because I knew what that meant. That he was the son, the heir to the promise of Abraham. And we in Christ are therefore also heirs to the promise. And suddenly those words just exploded in me in a very, very new way I've never experienced before. And I would actually say to see the whole Bible as one book and understand it, it just opened up in a totally new way. You cannot understand the New Testament without the Old Testament. I've often said, if I only had one book to choose between the New Testament and the Old Testament, I would, of course, pick the New Testament because there we read about Jesus and all of it. But you have to understand that the apostles, they actually did without the new. Yes, they have the testimony of Christ and they were sharing that. 
the words of the apostle, but it was not written down. And, and many of the first churches that started, they only have a few letters from the apostles. They did not have a whole complete New Testament for years. But they had the scriptures still, and that was the Old Testament. And there is so much more to teach out of the Old Testament. And I want to do that. I want us to see the Bible as a whole. And I think it will bless you in a way you will never have imagined because I knew, know that it blessed me in prison. So that was one thing that really started to happen me, in me in prison, that I start to understand the New Testament and the Old Testament and how it's one story, one book. Another thing that really happened to me in prison is that I start to see that I am a Gentile believer. I have always before just looked at myself as a believer. I'm a believer of Christ. Like I have not looked at me as a Gentile believer, but I start to understand it, that I'm actually a Gentile believer and what that means. And I want to read a verse here, a, a parable, a place from Ephesians chapter 2. I want you to listen to this. There's so much in it. And we read here uh, from verse 11. Paul, he says this. He said, remember therefore, and we need to remember, remember therefore that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth, that is you and me, and call uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcised, which is done by on, in the body by human hands. Remember that the time you were separated from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigner to the covenant of the promise without hope and without God in this world. And that was the thing. We as Gentiles believe us, not Jews. At one time, we need to understand that we were separated from Christ. And that means that we were excluded of the citizenship in Israel. And we were found to the covenant of the promise. So the promise to Abraham, the promise to David and being part of God's people, it was not for us. It was only for the Jews. But then he continues. And, and therefore, I want to say, and therefore, we were without hope in this world. There was no hope for us. Why? Because the Jews were God's elect people. And then we continue. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once was far away have been brought near by the blood of Jesus. And then he continues and talking about how we were one time far away. We were without hope. And then later, now you are no longer foreigner and strangers, but follow fellow citizenship, citizens of God's people and member of his whole house, the household. And he just continue in Christ we have it all. And I've never understood that before. I've never understood that all the promise we saw given to Abraham, to David, and their seed is Christ. And we in Christ are part of this. And we read here that in Christ, he have made a new people. He have joined those two together and make a new humanity. And this is some of the things I actually want to talk about during this teaching also. Why? Because it's very important. It's very important for us to understand this, especially when you are sitting there in prison and you are suffering and you feel there is not a lot of hope. And I feel there were so many things that year I did not experience. I was not with my family. I was not out traveling. I was not experienced a lot of things like other people's experience. But then when I got a deep understanding of the kingdom of God and what it means to be heirs to the promise, what it means to receive the blessing and the eternal life and our hope, 
that is the return of Christ, it changed a lot. And I want to say inside Jay lies the experience of freedom. And the freedom came from this word, from the truth. So this is what some of the things I want to, to teach to you as we move on in this series of preparing the church for what is coming. Another thing I want to say, you're going to hear me teach more out of Daniel <laughs> and out of Revelation. It's so interesting because people who have been on our Bible schools and, and, and work with me and so on, they know I, I never spoke about out of Daniel before or out of Revelation or out of Psalms. But in the time of prison, it really, it did something in me. I, I, I got an understanding of it, of the end times I've not understood before. I got an understanding of the Psalms I've never understood before. It's beautiful, the Psalms. I, I read them all six times during the, the prison time and, and so many things happened. So a lot of new things have happened and I want to teach that to you uh, through this series of preparing the church because this is important. But it's not only new things, as I said, there's many old things that have been revealed to me in a in a new light. So so there were some of the things I experienced God revealed to me during the present time. But I also learned a lot about suffering. It was a very hard time. And, and Paul, he said something in Philippians 3.10. He said, I want to know Christ better. And I think we all want to know Christ better. That, that is our main goal, all of us. And then he said, I want to know the power that raised him from the dead. And I want to share in his suffering. So Paul, he said, I want to know Christ better. I want to know the power of his death. And then he said the same line, I want to share in his suffering. I want to become like him by sharing in his death. There is something with suffering I did not understand before. And this is also something I want to talk more about. Peter, he said like this uh, in 1 Peter 4, he said here, be joyful that you are taking part in Christ's suffering. Then you will be filled with joy when Christ returns in glory. So we can learn to be joyful when we are taking part in Christ's Sovereign. Why? Because then we are filled with him, with joy, when he returns. Again, it's about getting the focus right. It's about understanding what suffering do, and this is a way for us to know Christ better. And it's about to understand the promise and the return of Christ and the kingdom of God and, and, and that there is a reward in heaven. And, and this is many of those things I want to talk to you about in this series as we move on. This first time, I want to talk about some of the things I knew before, but they have still been revealed to me in a new way. And I want to start with this, with giving you a kind of warning. And I want us to start here in Matthew chapter 10. So if I go to Matthew chapter 10, I've talked about Matthew 10 so many times about how Jesus sent out the 12. And uh, I think we all, we, we all read it. And I have a book. I can put the picture of the book in here. It's called The Call of Jesus, where I actually talk about, um, what it is Jesus said in Luke 10, in Matthew 10, and how he sent out his disciples. And I believe in all of that today. It is so important. Get this message because it, it works. I saw it in prison. Like I, I, I was living the call of Jesus out. I was living Matthew 10 out. I was living Luke 10 out. I found a person of peace in prison. I was doing Bible discovery group. I was baptizing people, cast out demons, preaching the gospel. I saw revival in prison. At one time, we had 22 uh, inmates out of 25 joining my Bible study, our Bible study every day. We saw amazing things in prison. And I often thought about the call of Jesus, what Jesus had was saying, because it just became even more real to us. So have you not got the book, The Call of Jesus? I really encourage you to get it. But one thing he said there when he sent out the 12, 
He sent them out, and then after the sending out, saying what they need to do, he said this to them, and I want to talk about that today. He said, I am sending you out in verse 16. I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be wise as snakes and innocent as stuff. Be on your guard. And then he continued that you will be handed over to the local council and you will be flogged in the synagogue. And you, on my account, you will be brought before governors and kings as witness to them and to the Gentiles. And when they arrest you, do not worry. Like those words, all of it exploded in me in a new way. And actually my case came before government. Like in the Congress, in America, they actually talked about me and my case and how I was persecuted by the sitting in, in administration in America. And, and that is, it, it really grew up there. And um, I want to talk about most of it another time, but the first words I want to focus on is, I'm sending you out as sheep among wolves. When we are sent out in this world, we need to be alert. We need to be on guard. And and in many ways, I knew it, but I was not alert enough. I was not enough on guard for what is happening. And I think many of us is not alert. And he continues that we should be wise as snakes and innocent as dove. And this is the thing. Are we wise as snakes in what we are doing? And I want to give a warning to you, especially you who are newer in, in ministry and just start. Be very aware of what you put on the internet. I've learned that the hard way. Be aware of what you put on the internet. Be aware of people around you. Be wise. Be on your guard. And I come with an example. Years ago, I was in Canada doing a meeting. And we did a meeting and, and our guy who invited us to Canada during a meeting, he said, hey, come to my place. I have some guns and you can try to shoot with the guns and the rifles and so on. And I was with Lebo. And as a Danish guy, you have never tried that. So I said, that would be fun. So we went there and we shot in his house with some of his guns and some of his rifles. And one time, it was like first time I ever hold a rifle in my hand, I think like that. And I actually thought, hey, that is cool. So I took a picture and put over my shoulder and took a picture and put on Facebook. I have a, I can put the picture in here. You can see the picture. And I, I was just making fun, like, hey, look at me, on a Schwarzenegger, nigger. like, I'm standing here with a rifle over my hand, I'm cool. And, and I did it just to be cool and just to be fun, and I, look at me, I'm standing with a rifle. That picture have gone all over the world now. That picture from Facebook had been put in some of the biggest newspaper in Denmark with the text, look, Torben, he loved weapons. Why? Because the lie came out that I was involved in weapon smuggling. We actually just gave out a video just today. No, yesterday we gave out a video update here on our YouTube channel where we actually talk about the weapon smuggling and where the lie come from and who actually came and started the whole weapon smuggling thing. Uh, I was accused for. But this picture was suddenly put up like, look, Tom, he loved weapons. Well, I have shot five, six times in my life with people. I have, I, I've tried it, but it's not me. Like, I'm not a weapon guy. Like, I'm like, okay, what is this called? And what is this called? And what? And when people talk about size of guns and rifles, I'm like a blank book. Like, I don't know. I don't know a lot about weapons. Uh, I'm not a weapon lover, but I took a picture and put on YouTube and on Facebook and suddenly it was all over YouTube. 
We need to be more wise. I need to be more wise with what I put online. And I want to say that to you as a warning Jesus gave us, we need to be wise, especially in the time we are entering into now. Don't be afraid, but be wise. There's a big difference. And I will talk about that another time. But he also continues, be, and then he said, be innocent as dove. That truly became strong for me. When they arrested me, they kept my phone. So when I was transferred for Homeland Security in Lando to Vegas County Detention Center, I got a property list of all the things I had with me, like my belt and my shoes and my pants and all of that. My phone was not on the list, not in the beginning. My phone was not there. And I knew that they had my PIN code because when I was asked to write in the PIN code, they were standing behind me and looking what I wrote down. And I knew that there was something corrupt going on. There was something completely off. And, and during the time in prison, I found out more and more that there was some people inside eyes who had done very bad things, I would say. And we come out with more information about that later. But you can also see something in the new update we did about the ICE officer who detained me. And I knew that they had my phone. <laughs> I knew they had my code. And I knew they had access to everything because they have access to my phone. And at one time I, I stopped up and thought, here I have some people who may want to hurt me. People who don't want me good. People who try to do a case against me, to try to destroy my life, who try to destroy my ministry. And they have my phone. They have my code. They have my browser history. They have my emails. They have my bank accounts. They have everything about me. When I found out that, I stopped off, to be honest, and like, in two saying like, whoa, what do they have? Is there anything that can be used? I know things can be misused, as the picture I showed you before. But is there anything that can destroy me? Anything that cannot handle to see the light? And I stopped up and after really examining and thinking very deep on it, I have a lot of time of thinking in prison, remember that. I came to a deep, deep peace and understand, and, and no, there is nothing. There is nothing they cannot see the light. And I was so thankful for that. Jesus said, what we have done in the hidden will be shouted for the rooftops. We cannot hinder that people tell lies about us and persecute us and, and, and trust our words and pictures and what we are doing. But we want to suffer for righteous Say, we don't want to suffer for things we have done wrong. And there, I was like, oh, there is nothing. And I felt a great, great peace. And I became so thankful that I years ago experienced the fear of God in my life. Years ago, I wrote a book, I put it in here, called The Sound Doctrine. The teaching that leads to the fear of God. If I have not experienced that fear of God years ago, if I have not experienced the freedom from sin that is in the gospel, and when you understand what repentance is and dying to Christ in the baptism, I would have been a different place in my life. And I want to encourage you all of, all of you out there and want to give a warning in this first teaching to you. Be wise as servants. 
Think of what you post, think of what you do, be alert. Don't be fearful, be alert. But also be innocent as stuff. Can you not handle other people? <laughs> Take your phone, your computer, and go into your browser history, look at your emails, look at your bank accounts, then repent. Start to clean up your life. Start to live in the light today. Live in a way that you know that everything you do will be what's. Somebody's looking over you. Somebody want to try to use it against you to smear your name and to destroy you. Maybe it will not happen, but maybe it will happen. So live a life already now, so you are prepared for what is coming. That you are prepared to be persecuted. You are prepared for somebody to take your phone, to take your computer. You are prepared for the enemy to get access to everything about you. And of course, you cannot change what you did in the past. But you can start today. And this is my message to you. Get the fear of God in your life. Start to clean up your life and live a life where you know that everything that's been done in the secret place, in the hidden, will one day be come to the light and be shown for everyone to see. So repent, my friends. Clean up your life. Ask God to help you to be wise as servants, to be alert, not fearful, to be alert. And ask God to help you to create a life where you are as innocent as stuff, where no, nobody, they can come with lies, they can twist your word, they can twist your pictures, they can twist everything you're doing. But you know you have a clean conscience and you know that no matter what people dig into your life, they will find nothing that can destroy you. This is a very, very important message. And during my time in prison, I was often dreaming about coming out and speaking to all of you. And I was longing to see you all. I was longing to be with you. I was longing to just... Come out and share what God had been giving me. I was missing it so much. And during that time in prison, I often thought, what is the first message? God, you want me to share to people out there. What is the first thing you want me to share? And I knew this was the first thing God wanted me to share. Be wise as servants and be innocent as stuff. I've been teaching about that in my book, The Call of Jesus, but that time I did not have an example of my phone being taken and me put in prison, so it became an even deeper reality to me. That was what I want to share. I want to end up just praying for everyone out there, and then I want to say share these videos, share it all with other people out there, and then I look forward to be with you every week from now on where I want to prepare you for what is coming. Let me pray with you. God, I thank you for everyone out here who are watching this. God, I pray that you will make them alert as you have said, Jesus, that we will be a people who are wise as serpents. We will be wise in what we do and, and we will be alert, but we will not be fearful. But we will also be innocent. Innocence as stuff. We will live in the fear of the Lord, fear of you, God. And we have nothing in our life that cannot handle to see the light. And if there is sin in our life, that we will repent. And we will turn away from that sin and we will come in and walk in the light. And this is so important. It has always been important, God. But it's even more important in this time we are heading into where we have many enemies. And we see many people fall because they have not been living this life. They have lacked the fear of God in their life and therefore they are falling and it's hurting the church, it's hurting the body. God, I pray for everyone who's listening to this that you will come with your Holy Spirit and they will experience the true fear of God in their life and if we transform them in a way they have never experienced before. Come with your Spirit, God, and 
Set people free. Heal them. Come with your Holy Spirit over them right now, God. Touch them. In the name of Jesus, I thank you. Amen. That's what I want to share. If you want to read the books, do that. Otherwise, I'm working on a new book <laughs> that will come out later about uh, those 412 days in prison. Uh, life changed in so many ways. God bless you. Look forward to see you next time. Bye-bye.